guys. So I thought it'd be fun to do the talking dog tag. I've seen a few people do this on YouTube and Instagram, but I wanted to do it, so we're going to. The first question is, what's your pet's name? So this is my learner, and her name is Faraby Fable. If you're here, you probably already know her. Um, she's pretty awesome. She's a standard poodle, and she is, she'll be three the end of April. Question number two, how long ago did you start? So she got her first buttons in April of 2020. We didn't really get serious until the end of March of last year. So the end of March, 2021. What buttons do you use? So we currently use Fluent Pet. I love their buttons so much. I did a video actually where I compare the two. So I compared Fluent Pet and Learning Resources buttons. I'll be sure to link that video up here for you guys as well as in the description box below. If you are interested in getting buttons and you decide to go with Fluent Pet, Fairby is a guide for them. So we have an affiliate link and I will put that in the description box below as well. The next question is, what were your first buttons? And Fairby's first buttons were outside, play, walk, and bye bye phone. What's Fairby wanna do? Okay, you gonna play on that? Oh, okay, thank you. All right. Good job. They were actually like longer words on there. They were, let's go for a walk, um, let's go outside, fair be play, and bye bye phone. Those were her first buttons because whenever I first started, I didn't plan to break the buttons down and have her actually create her own sentences. I'll link a video I made about this for you guys because I totally didn't have the idea, you know, for her to have a bunch of buttons to talk. I I thought we were just gonna do like, you know, some things and have full sentences on buttons, but those were her first buttons. We broke them all down into individual words afterwards though, like a year later. So this is a really good question. Why did you start? I liked the idea of having, you know, Fairby to be able to communicate with me in that way and get really specific. Fairby was a barker. She's a barker when she tries to tell me what she wants. And I saw this dog, Stella, which, you know, everyone knows Stella the talking dog. I saw her and, you know, she had a lot of buttons. I don't know how many she had. I wanna say there were at least 50, maybe. It just seemed like maybe that would be a good way for Fairby to express what she needed, but I really didn't like the idea of having individual buttons for each individual word. I liked the idea of having sentences, you know, like I'd said, with like, go for a walk, let's play, or fair be want play or whatever. I don't remember what I had, but like very specific sentences for her. So I honestly kind of thought it was silly to have all the buttons broke down for her to create her own sentence. I don't know, it just didn't click with me, I guess at the time. But I did like the idea that she could use buttons to ask her stuff. And I felt like that would, you know, limit the barking more and give her a way to actually ask for stuff she wanted. So that was why we started. And then let me see. Obviously, they're not gonna have a, a question about why you changed your mind. So the reason I changed my mind on the process was because I I think I started seeing more dogs actually forming their own sentences and saying funny stuff too. And that made me wanna do it. That made me wanna break the buttons down and have a lot of options for her because there are some dogs who say funny stuff and they're like dead serious about it, you know? So that was why we broke them down, but we didn't break them down for like a year or so. Favorite button for me and for Fairby. So Fairby's favorite button changes, I wanna say by like the, every couple weeks. Most recently her favorite was telling me about the weather. So any weather button, so sunny, cloudy, rain, night and day, like all of those were like her favorites for a minute. Yes, it's daytime, it's Before that, Let's Do Tricks was her favorite. And then now she's kind of moved on to Went. So Went is our newest button and she is telling me Went, like whenever we go outside, she'll say Went Potty. Yes. Good job. Good mail. Yay, Potty Went. Very good. 
So that's her current favorite. I think my favorite is still Let's Do Tricks, honestly, because it makes me do tricks with her. And a lot of times I don't think to just ask her to do tricks. So I think that's my favorite because of that. I also really like the relax button. So for those of you who don't know, Fairby is my service dog. So there will be times where I'm getting really, really like upset, feeling, and I'm not paying attention to her, like trying to tell me I need to chill and she'll go over and hit relax, relax, relax. And so I think that's an awesome button too. Yeah. Next question, what would you do differently? So, gosh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like the only thing I really would have done differently is something I couldn't have done differently, and that is start with the buttons that we were gonna continue to use throughout the process. So um, if I had have started later, I would have went with Fluent Pet from the beginning. They weren't a brand, um, and if they were, they were like so underground and you could not find them in April of 2020 that it was, I don't even think it was option. That would be what I did different, is just get whatever type of buttons I was gonna use at first. For a few reasons, number one, just because I think that was kind of a difficult transition for her to move from her bigger buttons that were kind of all laid out in a straight row to different smaller buttons that were on hex tiles. So I think I would have done that differently. Yeah, I think that's really the main thing, but I also think maybe I would have started with individual words instead of having to break buttons down because once again, that kind of upset her whenever I started breaking buttons down because it didn't say what it had said before. So I kind of think those are the two things I would have done different, but you know, we learn as we go and that's what we've done and here we are. So the next question is, what advice do you have? So I would say my biggest piece of advice is just to go at your own pace. Um, so whether it's your dog or cat or whoever, um, add buttons as they feel like they need them, as they want them, and as they are getting used to using what you currently have. Also, with that being said, don't be afraid to add a button if let's say that you've added something and they're not using it, but you think of something that might be more interesting to them to add, go ahead and add another button because sometimes like I'll put buttons down that I'm so sure that she's gonna love. Like I put down a cold button, for example, because she liked talking about the weather. So I'm like, cool, we'll throw in cold and hot too. She doesn't care about those. And I was like, so sure, I was so excited. I was like, she's gonna love being able to tell me about this part too. She doesn't care. I don't think she's ever pressed it unless it was like on accident or if I was telling her <laughs> to press it. So that, um, but don't be afraid to just, you know, take it slow and steady. Also, don't be afraid to add new buttons even if your learner's not using all the buttons you have. I kind of feel like you could potentially overwhelm them by having too many options, but I also think that having, you know, maybe if they're not using what you've put down and they're only using one of them and they're showing interest, then maybe add something else. I would not start with treat. <laughs> um, anything that they are gonna request from you anyway, um, even like go to bed, like if your dog's a dog who wants to go get in bed at night, like if they, you know, if they're that dog, you know, everybody has that dog in their life or has before had the dog who's like so excited and trying to like scurry off to the bed and like, you know, herd the family into the bedroom. Um, at some point in the early evening way before it's time. So that might be a fun button to add. But yeah, I mean, I guess I don't really have any great advice other than just have fun with it. And you know, some dogs take to it really quick, some don't. I'm sure it's the same with cats. Um, be patient. Also don't deny them. Like if you know they need to go to the bathroom and you can tell by their body language, but you really want them to press the button, take them out anyway. Um, don't insist that they use the buttons. You model for them. So whenever you're taking them out, then you would press, you know, go potty or go outside or whatever you want to say on the buttons and then just model for them and be a good example. Oh, my other advice. I, I'm coming up with advice now that I said I didn't have any. The other advice that I have is definitely try to be patient with how quickly you respond. So a lot of times, Fairby will not be done with a thought and I will jump in and respond. And you can tell by her body language, she turns around really quickly like I wasn't done talking. Um, so try to give like 30 seconds or so after you feel like they're done and just see if they are. Obviously if they come to you or if they turn around completely and look at you or whatever, then you know maybe they're done and you can respond before that. But I would definitely take time 
and I wish that's something that I could do too. I need to take my own advice on this, but just try really hard to take your time and give them space to finish their thoughts. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. I am going to link a subscribe button up here. I will link a playlist with talking dog, talking dog playlist here. <laughs> that was the cutest yawn ever. And then I'll link another video just for you up here and we will see you soon. Bye guys.